morning. Welcome to Bethel Baptist Church, to our devotional this morning. I'd like to speak to you this morning about being a friend to somebody. Oh, don't we all need to be a friend? You know, that word means ally, a supporter, a sympathizer, to show compassion. Uh, Saul was a man that started out well as the first king of Israel and then fell into sin, and it just led to more sin and more sin, finally died in battle. But at all that time, he had a friend, and that friend was David. David was a man that loved Saul, regardless of all that evil that was taking place in his life. Uh, 2 Samuel uh, chapter 1, we'll read about what takes place here, uh, whether or not uh, this is the judgment of God upon Saul that he died in battle, that his son Jonathan, that was a friend to David, died in battle, maybe because of Saul's sin. <clears throat> now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had abode two days in Ziglag, it came even to pass on the third day that behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes rent and earth upon his head. And so it was when he came to David that he fell to the earth and did obeisance. And David said unto him, from whence comest thou? And he said unto him, out of the camp of Israel am I escaped. And David said unto him, how went the matter? I pray thee, tell me. And he answered, that the people are fled from the battle. And many of the people also are fallen and dead. And Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead also. And David said unto the young man that told him, How knowest thou that Saul and Jonathan, his son, be dead? And the young man told, that told him said, As I happened by chance, upon Mount Gilboa. Behold, Saul leaned upon his spear, and lo, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. And when he looked behind him, he saw me and called unto me, and I answered, here I am. Up till this point, it records in another scripture that he asked his armor bearer to fall on him, and his armor bearer would not, being fearful. And then Saul said, I will fall on it myself, it may be that he fell on it and life was still in him. And he said unto me, who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. He said unto me again, stand, I pray thee upon me and slay me for anguish has come upon me because my life is yet whole in me. So I stood upon him and slew him because I was sure that he could not live after that he was fallen, and I took the crown that was upon his head and the bracelets that was on his arm and have brought him hither unto my Lord. David wouldn't even consider doing something like that to his friend Saul. He had many opportunities, two, at least two opportunities to slay Saul. His heart smote him just because he cut a piece off his robe because he was the anointed of the Lord. Then David took hold of his clothes and rent them. And likewise, oh, to have love like that from somebody for you. What about the love of Christ that he died for you? Shed his blood for your sin that was worse than anything that Saul did. Our sin is worse and likewise, all the men that were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until even for Saul and for Jonathan, his son, and for the people of the Lord, for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. And David said unto the young man that told him, Whence art thou? He answered, I am the son of a stranger, Amalekite. And David said unto him, 
How wast thou not afraid to stretch forth thine hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? And David called one of the young men and said, Go near and fall upon him. And he smote him that he died. And David said unto him, Thy blood be upon thy head, for thy mouth hath testified against thee, saying, I have slayed the Lord's anointed. And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan, his son. Oh, to have a friend like David. There is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. His name is Jesus. And he bade him teach the children of Judah the use of bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. The beauty of Israel is slain upon the high places. How are the mighty fallen? Tell it not in Gath, publish it not in the streets of Ascalon. Lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. Lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Ye mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you, nor fields of offerings. For there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away. And David had a love for his people. And David had a love for Israel. The shield of Saul, as though he had not been the anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. The daughters of Israel weep over Saul, who clothes you in scarlet with other delights, who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? O oh, Jonathan, thou wast slain in thy high places. I am distressed for thee, my brother, Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of a woman. How are the mighty fallen and the weapons of war? Perished. Is there any such book in the world as the book of the Bible? How are the mighty fallen? The day does come when we die. What will be said about you and your life? Will you have a friend like Saul had? And David was broken. David's love for the king and for Jonathan and for the children of Israel that were slain in the battle is unmistakable in this passage. Regardless of whether this was because of the sin Saul envied, Saul envied David and tried to slay him. David still loved him. Saul was guilty of having put to death 85 priests and their families. You can read about that in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 6 to verse 19. <clears throat> David said in Psalm 141 and verse 5, Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness, and let him reprove me, it shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. And David was a man that prayed for Saul. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 17, a friend loveth at all times. There be a friend to somebody today. And a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24, a man that has friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, Jesus. And the Lord gave King Saul a 40-year reign. Plenty of time to turn back to him after his sin some 38 years earlier before when he took the place of offering a burnt sacrifice, which was not lawful for him to do. And then it just went downhill from there. In 2 
Samuel chapter 1, here in verse 17, verse 17. <clears throat> and David lamented. And David lamented. This word here is wail, uh, to strike a musical note, not in joyous song, but in a chant, a sing-song way of speaking, a lamenting. What beautiful words, how are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? Verse 25, how are the mighty fallen? To have a true friend is so nice. And yet Jesus said to us to love one another, to love our neighbor as ourself. Verse 26, David was friends with Jonathan. Uh, verse 26, I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of a woman. Be a friend to someone today, a true friend is what we need. You know, a, a friend that is in need is a friend that we should be a friend to. And even if you don't have a friend, remember that there is a friend that's thicker, closer than a brother. That's Jesus, and he loves you today. He loves me today. Thank you, Lord, for your love for me, for being a friend to me. Help me to be a friend to somebody, Lord. I pray, Lord, if there's someone watching by way of this program that they don't know your Savior, that they would realize that <coughs> you love them and died for them and that you want them to be saved and have a home in heaven. <coughs> that it was the gospel, the good news that Jesus died and was buried and rose again to save sinners. Lord, I just pray, Father, that someone might be saved today. And they, if someone's watching and willing to do that and call upon the name of the Lord, do that. Call upon Him. He'll save your soul and let us know. And if you're confused about salvation, we'd be glad to take the Bible and show you from the Scripture how you can be saved. Bless our day, Lord. Help us to have a good day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Have a great day. 